I was just trying to give people a chance to get here. Um, you know, they they put. Um, I got the perfect time while they're voting for the national presidential <laughs> candidate. So, but they have to have one for those who aren't delegates or you know just attending whatever. But um, once again, let me introduce myself. I'm Kevin Fortune. I'm from Atlanta. I was born actually in Illinois, um, Peoria, and I'm in Chicago. Then I moved down to Naples for a while. But my parents are in Atlanta, so I'm uh, from Atlanta. But I work with the group called, uh, that I formed, Liberty America. But we go all over the country, so I'm from everywhere, actually. And they put um, the seminar's title, Liberty America Seminar, but it's, the actual title is How to Have a Successful Libertarian Movement, or Liberty Movement, actually. Um, and I use the word libertarian in the sense of an adjective, uh, the principles of liberty. And we're going to talk about that a, a, a little bit. But is anybody here excited about liberty? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. First lesson. <laughs> you're not going to draw people if you're not excited yourself, OK? First lesson, let's try that again. Is anybody excited about liberty? Yeah. All right, that's the first lesson. You're not going to attract people if you're not excited. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. That was just the test. But like I said, I'm kind of laid back. If you have a question, kind of wave your hand. I had surgery on my eyes. Just wave your hand and jump up or something. But what we're going to try to do is I'm going to go through a little, a few things, and then at the end we'll kind of have questions. So if you write them down, uh, I will not forget. Um, and I can't talk, so somebody let me know when it's like uh, 10.45. <laughs> But um, once again, I'm Kevin Fortune. Um, what I'm going to talk about is the, the group we started, Liberty Americas, uh, libertyamerica.org, if you want to look it up online. Um, it's a grassroots movement, and it's a liberty movement. Uh, we actually have something that people have been trying to do for years. We have Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Constitutionalists, uh, Tea Party, Patriots, all under the same umbrella of liberty which is really the secret to success. You can't just limit yourself and you can't put liberty in a box. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You have to reach out and grab everybody. And we're gonna talk about Mr. Donald Trump because everybody's doubting him, but his movement is teaching us something. You're getting a uh, lessons on activism and a movement really uh, right on TV because it's a people's movement and it's not even about him. He's getting all the credit, but it's not even about him actually. So um, what I'm gonna do, first of all, is talk about uh, myself, my story, and then the Liberty America story. And then we're gonna go into what is uh, a movement and what is libertarian and a successful movement. But you're gonna be learning different parts of it through, throughout the whole thing. And I start with my story because um, they call me the king of liberty. Uh, they, my nickname is KK. When I was growing up, my cousins, um, they couldn't say Kevin. So they would, you know how your mother would say, you know, cut, cut Kevin. So they would call me cut, cut KK. And so then when I got into Libertarian, they said, well, you're a KK, King Kevin, King of Liberty, or something like that. But I like that not because kings or uh, leaders are not um, authoritarian figures, but they're servants. So I'm here to serve Liberty. And that's what we do. As a matter of fact, I don't have, I had business cards, they're all gone and everything. But uh, I'll give you my email, it's kevin at libertyamerica.org. Or we'll go to our website and fill out the contact form. If you ever need me, we're here to serve. And so when I say king, don't take it, you know, like I'm arrogant or whatever, but I'm here to serve. I'm here to help you to have liberty and have successful libertarian in whatever your campaigns or whatever you're doing. But um, the first thing about having any kind of successful movement or anything is it starts with you. And a lot of times people want, you know, we want to have a website, we want to have all of this show and all of this stuff type of thing, but it starts with you. And so my story uh, to liberty is I grew up, um, I grew up in a, I guess you call it a middle class family. Uh, my dad worked for Caterpillar Tractor Company, and we had a very well to do, like, I mean, for, for um, minorities, I would say something like that. But um, my mother was a, a big activist. I mean, I was actually the, the most profound memory I remember of my mother was I was like three years old, and I was carrying this big sign that was like twice, three times my size, and we were protesting in the 60s or whatever. I'm, I'm telling my age, aren't I? But, but um, so, you know, I grew up in a really activist family, very politically involved, a very religious family. Um, you know, we went to church like every day, literally. Uh, holiness, you know, we were bad, but we were those holiness, kind of Pentecostal type now. I mean, it was just something that you know, I, my first thing was when I grew up, I'll never go to church again. Because <laughs> we went literally almost every day, you know. Um, they started a new choir, my brother said, sign my grandson, I'm like, you're not gonna ask me, you know? But um, so, you know, being active, getting involved in the community was always a part of our life. Um, but as I got older and I went to college, I started, you know, getting more involved. Um, when I went to college, well, we grew up pretty much Democratic, because where we were, it was like union, labor, uh, the UAW, you had to be part of it, you know. If you wanted to live in our town and, um, you know, work for Catholic and all that, so the labor movement, the, the Democrats, they were really for civil rights and everything. But then when I went to college, I decided to, uh, 
I majored in uh, finance. Well, it was funny, my mother asked me, what are you gonna major in in college? I said, money. Okay, you know, I'm just majoring in money. So, um, but I'm a I was a finance major. And as I began to study um, capitalism and markets and everything, I began to realize that free markets are more, is more appropriate. So I kind of started leaning towards uh, the Republican side, but I never officially went over, so I became more like an independent. But then more recently, after all these catastrophes uh, with Gore and with uh, even Obama and uh, the last leg, I was like, hey, I'm tired of the Democrats, so I kind of switched to Republicans. But they didn't really want to do practice what they preach. Anybody ever notice that? Yeah. They talk about free markets, but they don't do it. You know, they want the, to spend our tax dollars. Uh, I'm from Atlanta, they're spending like, we give them like three or five billion dollars of tax money to build a private dome for the, the Falcons. And they're getting like two or three hundred million from ESPN and they're paying people a hundred million dollars to throw a football, but we have to give them our tax dollars. Uh, they say they're for limited government, but yet I know in Georgia they want to take over the transportation system. They want to take over the, the schools, all of the failing schools. So I said, you know, they don't practice what they preach. So um, I kind of said, I'm not even going to vote anymore. I'm tired of this stuff. And I ran across um, some people in the uh, Liberty Movement that uh, was running for office, and I, I hooked up with some of their campaigns, and I began to look into libertarianism, the party actually, and the, the concepts, the philosophies, and I began to realize I'm a libertarian. I didn't even know it, you know. Um, so that's how I kind of got into that. But what uh, one thing that has brought me, um, I don't like the word fame, but some attention as a libertarian is that I, uh, I live the life. And that's the first thing to have any successful movement is you have to live the life. Does that make sense? If you're not living liberty, people are not going to follow you. Um, a lot of times people are running for office and they're saying, um, you know, I'm for uh, civil rights, but they, they don't practice that. Or they say, um, I'm for uh, equality of marriage, but they don't really believe it or put it into action. And not, you cannot fool people. And that's why people are, they're really resonating with Donald Trump because he's just being real. They might not even agree with him, but he's being real. So the first thing is living the life. Um, for me, as I was growing up, I had a problem with my eyes and I, because I had surgery on it. And so my vision was fading and I wasn't working and everything and I got depressed and everything. So I ended up drinking and drugging, or not really bad, but I ended up living um, like in home, like in shelters. You know, they're nice, they actually have nice shelters, trust me. <laughs> and I actually ended up uh, on welfare, you know, like this little whatever. But then, you know, I really, I remembered my roots and I came back to God. And, and I say that because part of our, our thing is I also have been strong in Christian uh, libertarianism, which is a whole other concept. Because a lot of times, uh, Ayn Rand, a lot of libertarian people don't believe in any kind of religion or, or whatever. And that's not true. There are a lot of libertarians who have who are people of faith. But, um, so when I came back to myself, I decided to go back to finish college because I had actually dropped out of school. And um, I began to, uh, you know, work and save my money, invest my money, and I finished my, you know, thing in finance. Um, and I began to get, uh, I was able to get off of welfare. I was able to say, you know, go to the food stamp and say, hey, you know, they can send me a letter since time to renew. I said, well, I don't want them. I don't need them anymore. And the lady, you know, they're like, we've never had a person, this lady said, 40 years, come in and refuse food stamps and say they don't want them. You know, what's wrong with you? Yeah. You know, they begged me. She said, well, just give the card in case. She said, I said, no, I'm a libertarian. And, you know, I know how free markets work, and it works. And so that's the, the my greatest claim to fame is that I have gone from welfare to wealth. Now, I'm not a billionaire like Donald Trump, but God has really blessed me. And um, I've got a little money to make emphasis on little. <laughs> and um, my, a lot of my bills are paid, and I'm, I'm living comfortably, but I'm satisfied, you know. Um, but that is a testimony it's in itself. And matter of fact, uh, when I came into town, they had heard that I was coming because I was on the website, and they asked me to speak at the Salvation Army here in Orlando because I remember living at, staying at the Salvation Army, they had these little cheap little rooms you could rent, and they were just so amazed that you could go from living there to owning your own business um, and, uh, you know, start this organization or whatever. And that's what I want to emphasize too, that the first thing is living the life of living. And I'm not talking about being perfect, but I mean, if you say things, practice what you preach, because people are watching. Does that make sense? People are watching. And my grandma used to say, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one. I'd rather see a lecture than hear. I'd rather see your actions and your movement uh, rather than just talk about it. And that is, um, leads me to transition to the next part is Liberty America, the Liberty America story. The Liberty America story, our mission is to put liberty into action. I love that. It's not about, I'm just, I don't know if anybody else is, but I was tired of debates. I was tired of uh, debating libertarianism, talking to philosophical 
uh, Beasties versus High End and all that. I was tired of, you know, talking about it, blogging about it, going on Facebook about it. Like, let's do it. You know, anybody ever want to see Liberty put in action? Yes. Anybody want to see taxes cut? Anybody want to see less for limited government? So that's, that was our, our whole thing. So I said, okay, I, I went to one political party and different groups and nobody wanted to work with me, nobody. They wanted to sit around and like three people sitting at Starbucks having coffee, not doing anything too much. So I'm like, okay, I'll do my own thing. And um, it really just, it picked up as a movement. And that's what I want to talk about because movements are usually not created. They usually kind of just come together like the Donald Trump thing, it just came together. People began to resonate with him. So once people begin to resonate with you um, as far as liberty, they'll begin to um, to get on board, hopefully. And if not, we're going to talk about some of the challenges to, to having a movement. But we're going to talk about how to have a successful movement. And I want to emphasize that because you see a lot of people have groups and organizations. They've got lots of people on their email list. They have this fancy website, but they're not doing anything, or they're not getting the results. And I'm not down saying it in a negative way, they're not doing anything, but we want the results. We want people to come into libertarianism, and begin to live it. We want the taxes cut, living together. We want the non-aggressive uh, policy. We want peace people. Does that make sense? We want individual freedoms and liberty. And I want to see it in action, I just talk about it. Uh, I, live in the, I live in Georgia, which is the deep south. So a lot of people talk about you know individual liberties and we love everybody, and, and it's, it's really strange because they don't. And growing up in church, sometimes uh, religious people that talk the most about love are not always the most loving. And that's what turns a lot of people off. Does that make sense? And I'm saying, I don't want you to think you have to be perfect, but try to practice what you preach. And, and you know, when you begin to uh, live the life of liberty, somebody's gonna notice that and say, hey, I like what that guy's doing. I like, you know, I see the results. I see the positive aspects of it. And they will wanna uh, join and get on board. So just quickly, uh, <clears throat> Liberty America is a, uh, our mission, like I said, is to put liberty in action, and what it is is to promote the fundamental principles of liberty. And what uh, that's what we're going to talk about a successful liberty movement, because um, a lot of times people don't understand what liberty is about. And like I said, it's not a, we don't just promote the Libertarian Party. I am a part of the Libertarian Party, a proud Libertarian. But what I tell people is promote liberty, okay? And when you promote liberty, people want you know. Um, it's just like if you're um, trying to get, uh, when you're dating, you're trying to get your wife to marry or whatever, you don't just say, I want you to marry me, you come to fall in love with you. Get them to fall in love with liberty, and that's the first step, and then the rest will come. Now, in saying that, they might not agree with all the principles of liberty, all of the different parts, agree with everything, but if you can resonate with one area, maybe they're for um, non-aggressive foreign policy, they're for peace, but they're not for equality in marriage, they're not for cutting taxes. But start with the area they are for, and you can still work with them. Does that make sense? Because a lot of times, we kick people out if they don't 100% agree with us. And we, we block them out, we miss donors, or we miss people that could be working with us, volunteers, or support. So that's Liberty America. Um, but what we stand for is, like I just mentioned, individual freedoms and liberties, um, non-aggressive foreign policy, uh, free market, lies of capitalism, free markets, as well as, which one I miss? I miss one. Limited yeah, limited government or smaller. I used to say smaller government because um, sometimes you say limited government, that sounds so restricted to people. But it's the same thing. But let's get the government out of our darn business. Does that make sense? They're in our personal lives and our jobs. I'm going to tell you what you can eat. You know, that's, you know that's, that's crazy. Let's get back to the Constitution and let's put it in action. I mean, we talk about the Constitution, we teach it in school, but where is it? We don't want to, uh, you know, put it in action. And that just, it's bizarre to me. But is it to anybody else? You know, you know, why do we have a constitution if we don't want to use it? Does that make sense? <laughs> so I'm talking to the uh, preacher to the choir. But, so that's what Liberty America is about. And as we started, um, we got a little notoriety because like I said, we were able to draw, um, you know, Republicans and Democrats and Tea Party people. And a lot of times people from the, the Tea Party do not mix with, with Libertarians. But we've got them all under the same umbrella of Liberty. And we've had a uh, few events. What we do, just so that you know if you ever need us, like we want to serve liberty. We have events sometimes ourselves. We have like a free market summit in Atlanta. But we partner with other people. We believe in going to coalitions with others. So if you have a group, if you have a group, then we'll work with you. And um, that's really weird because I'll call somebody and say, you know, how can we help you? What can we do to help you? And people are like, what? What do you mean? This is America. You know, it's all about me, me, me. You know, but we are here to help other people. And when you, your movement should be, what can we do for the people? And that's what we're gonna get into. The movements are about the people. Do you realize that? Don't forget the people. 
I mean, does anybody realize that the government has kind of forgotten the people? Your congressmen, do they ever forget you? Your, their, their constituents? They don't know we exist. Right. And, you know, that's why Donald Trump is doing so well, because he's taking it to the people. Forget the news media. Forget the government. Forget all those regulatory agencies. Take it to the people. They're the ones voting. They're the ones paying the taxes. And they're the ones that's going to be part of your movement. So um, I'm going to stop here, just because I don't want to do all the talking. But I want to just ask you, is, what kind of movements are you guys involved in? Just speak out. You don't have to. I'm very informal. Anybody running for campaigns or anything? Can I ask you a question? Go ahead, yes. I would say that if you ask everybody in this room what they think liberty is, you're going to get a different answer from every person. Would you please define the liberty? Okay. We're going to go to that. Don't have a fit. Okay. Uh, I'm just a libertarian for I'm not a religious contract. Okay. Well, that is activism. <laughs> Getting people to, okay. Go ahead. Anybody else? Anybody running for office? No. Okay. Anybody have their, any other organizations they're working with? And th some of these things that we're talking about are successful in any kind of movement, because that's what we're going to talk about, liberty and, and movement. Um, and I'm glad that the, the gentleman brought up, because that's the next transition. We talked about my story of liberty and Liberty America's story. And um, then we also now we're going to talk about how to have a successful uh, liberty movement. So what is liberty? And that's what um, I just mentioned. Those four principles are basically the four basic general, they're very general principles of liberty. And I'm glad you brought that up, because that is very, very important. Um, you know, we get into, when you get into liberty, you don't get into a whole lot of specifics, but basically you're into individual freedoms, individual rights, okay? And it started way back, like, uh, one of the first libertarian movies that we're going to talk about was, like, uh, the anti-slavery movement, the abolitionist movement. You know, like, hey, these people are, should be free, you know? So it really wasn't <laughs> about slavery, it was, it was right or wrong, but it's individual liberties. Do you understand the difference? Uh, just like they were, the other day they were having bylaws, committees and they were like, well, how do we feel about abortion? How do we feel about um, you know, same-sex marriage? Well, the issue is not the thing, it's individual liberties. And that's what a lot of people miss. It's your, uh, as a libertarian, it's your individual right, okay? If you want to have abortion, that's your right. If you don't, it's your right. Uh, labor unions, if you want to join one, it's your right. But the government shouldn't force you to or they shouldn't ban, or ban them where you can't join them also. And so that's what the first thing is, individual rights and freedoms. Does that make sense? And I say that because I run into a lot of people that say they're libertarians, but um, they don't like this or they don't like that. And I said that's fine, but long as it's, it's, it's about your individual freedom. That's the first thing. The second one is non-aggressive foreign policy. Um, as as uh, people of liberty, um, they're not anti-war, they're not anti-military. You know, my dad was in the military. Um, but they're for, you know, Defensive, defending yourself. If somebody um, does something to your children, or if they threaten your family, you know, you might pull out your Second Amendment on them or something, or you might defend yourself, and that's understandable, you know. But we're not for just going and just starting un uh, wars, unnecessary wars, or wars just to take property, or wars to get more money, or, or different things like that, and as well as getting in other people's wars. You know, um, I just really believe we should mind our own business. And that's kind of the liberty, the general concept. And like I said, you know, you can pick that apart, and that's what people do. And a lot of times, they're doing themselves a disservice by doing that. Does that make sense? Picking, you know, you know tweaking this and that. But in general, and I know you, you, people say there's no big generalizations, but that's just the the basic uh, foundational principle is that non-aggressive uh, policy. Uh, you know, and we respect property rights. People of liberty respect, you know, property rights. So that, that you have your individual property rights, whether it's your body, your mind, your money, um, as well as, so when you go to uh, on foreign soil, you respect other people's property rights too. So that goes into the concept of non-aggressive foreign policy. Um, limited, smaller government. Can you guys help me with that? What do you think of that? Sure. For that, is that part of liberty? You know, and it's funny though, because you're, you'll meet people that say they're for that, but they, oh yeah, but we need, we need the government to do this. Uh, you know, I have a friend who's really a libertarian, but yet he wants the government to pay for all of his kids' education. And he wants, you know, and I'm like, okay, is that liberty government? And I was actually at, um, I was watching a thing, uh, Rand Paul was up in, I think, D.C. at uh, Howard University. And he was talking about, you know, getting the government out of education and all that, because I'm really, like, just get rid of the whole Department of Education and all this stuff. And this guy's like, yeah, but I want the government in my education. I want the, and I'm like, are you for real, you know? But some people do, but they'll say they're libertarians. But, um, you know, libertarians is basically, and I like that, smaller or limited government, um, less regulations. And I really, you know, I understand that sometimes you're going to have different phases. you got your total anarchists all the way to people who are really 
mild or liberal libertarian. So you're going to have the gamut all in between. But these are just the foundations of it. Um, reality, you're going to always have some type of structure, um, whether it's official or not. You know, if you have a marriage, somebody's kind of in charge, even if it's at different times. If you have a couple of kids, one, if you leave the house, you leave kind of one in charge. So you're going to have some uh, just what I call uh, just normal uh, standards or rules and regulations. But the, the over oppressive rules and regulations that the government has now and, and President Biden, I mean, I just, it's just unreal. Um, I think he's a wonderful guy. <laughs> he's from Chicago. But I mean, the, the, the regulation, it's just, I mean, I can't even keep up with him. Am I the only one? I mean, it's just every day it's two and three and four and six and 12. And, and, and you know, it's just unbelievable. Um, and so that's the other thing. And then last but not least is the uh, free market economies, laissez-faire capitalism. Uh, you know, everybody understand that? Because when you say that, people are like, what's that? They used to teach it in school. But it's just that the government, once again, should stay out of the, the free market. So the market can operate on itself. And it does do so very well. Um, and a lot of the uh, problems that we have in our nation, even the social problems, whatever, the free market would actually correct that. But the government keeps intervening more and more and more and more and more so that it cannot flow normally. So a lot of times people say, well, the free market, it doesn't work, but it can't work when you've got the government with this foot in there not making it work. Does that make sense? Any more questions, any, any questions about liberty? Let's stop there. Any more questions about liberty or the uh, libertarian principles? Well, I'd like to let you read this real quick. Go ahead. There it is. <laughs> oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Liberty. Liberty means to exercise human rights in any manner a person chooses, so long as it does not interfere with the exercise of the rights of others. From Liberty Defined by Ron Paul. You can have this if you like to have it. I think I had that somewhere, I'm sure. Okay. I've got more paper. But no, that's a good, I'm glad. I'm, that is a really concise, you know, thing. I just broke it down a little more so about putting it into action. Because, when we, you know, a lot of times, and um, when I first, if you like Google Liberty, you'll see these, they have these summits and debates, and they'll start with the philosophical view of it. But what people, we're really, it's a, it's a new paradigm. Has anybody noticed it's a new day? I mean, I know you guys are all under the age of 29, but uh, it's different. It's a little different than what I was going to, I mean, it is a really new day, and people really want to see things. They want to see action. That's why, like, they don't want to elect a politician. And I mean, I'm, well, I'm a little radical, a little, I'm a rebel, okay, I, I admit it. So I'm, I'm really excited, like, people are like, we don't want a politician, we don't want a senator. You know, we want, and it's not that they're anti the politician, but they, they get to uh, DC and they don't do anything. And people are tired. Is anybody here tired of that? Yes. I mean, they're, I mean, really tired of it? They don't even do anything. They I mean, like, do something, you know, blow, blow bubbles, anything, you know. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you know. So um, people are really, you know, tired of that. And I think um, uh, that's one thing I, sort of, I try to keep it very practical. Practical, I mean, I've studied some of the philosophers, like Rousseau and Voltaire and all that. But people, a lot of times it turns people off. It's, I love a good debate, but people are just want to, like, how do I just feed my kids? You know, how do I be myself in a society that doesn't want to accept me based on my race or, or sexual orientation or your economic status? So people are just, you know, you know, I'm tired of people getting killed unnecessarily in all these wars. We don't even know, I don't even know the country or where it's at or what are we going there for. So people, I like the practicality, but I thank you for sharing that, brother. That was really good. Anybody else, anything else on liberty? Any questions? Understand Yeah, I, 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 I personally the, the, the day that, that, uh, that really helped me is that Freedom is, is the ability to do whatever one pleases, right? So freedom could be me, me reaching inside your pocket, pulling out your wallet, and taking it. That's, that's freedom. But liberty is applied a non-aggressive principle to freedom. Right. It, 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 it's application of NAP to freedom. Right. right. So that's and respecting the property rights, what he said, of yeah. others. And that's yeah. you can't respect, you can't violate somebody else's property, whether it's their physical body, their mind. There, you know, the government wants to tell you what to think and what religion to believe. You can't. That's, that's not liberty. So, and I'm, I'm glad that we're spending time with this because you can't have a successful movement if you don't know what your movement is about. So we've already killed a lot of the stones, as they would say. Um, so let's talk about that. How do you have a successful libertarian movement, liberty movement? And I say that because sometimes you have movements that are not successful. You don't get people to show up. You don't get people to work with you. But how many people do you need to start a movement? And how many people do you need to have a movement? Two different questions. 
two different answers. I can tell you that. So, so one person run the movement. Three no, percent, it's five percent. Uh, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. One person start the movement. Correct. Probably three to five percent to to drive the movement. Anybody else have any other answers? Right. Okay. A movement is just when people come together for a common cause and they're doing something. Okay. Does that make sense? That is oversimplified, but that's what a movement is. And I'm saying it because sometimes we uh, we complicate stuff or we overanalyze things. It doesn't take all that. It takes one person to start a movement. And I'm telling you, when I wanted to start my movement, I went to so many different groups, and a lot of them just rejected me. Like, oh, you don't have a ten thousand dollars to donate. You can't be with us. <laughs> you know. Uh, you, you weren't born on the right side of the track, you know, we don't want to be bothered. And a lot of people, their movements or their organizations, let me say, not their movement, their organization, it's about them. It's about getting their name on, on TV or, their, or in the paper. They really don't care what they're doing. And that's why I emphasize the liberty so much because the, the, the cause that you're, you're fighting for in the movement is very, very important. And that's what people are resonating with Donald Trump. They're listening at, you know, they're not agreeing with everything he says, but they're looking at what he's talking about. He's talking about doing things in action. When he's talking about building a wall, but that's a physical action, that's something specific. And that's what I'm saying, people don't just want to hear it. Let's have liberty. They want to say, okay, what are we going to do with that liberty? What does that mean? What does that look like in reality, in action? Does that make sense to anybody? And so, um, you guys are really helping. You guys should be teaching this class. But um, that, that's very important. So to have a successful liberty movement, first of all, we've already said, you got to know what the cause, uh, your cause, the movement is all about. And now that needs to be very, very clear and precise. But it doesn't have to be, you know, real nitpicky and real, does that make sense? But you want to have, because what happens is a lot of times you'll have people, you hear somebody, uh, meet somebody you think is with you, but they're really not, or you think you're on the same page, but you're not. So you want it to be clear and precise, but it doesn't have to be like cut in stone, because your movement uh, <coughs> it can expand, or it can contract, you can change the, the mission state, you can mold it, or, or tweak it, let's say, like that. Um, but you want to have a clear, uh, a clear movement, a clear uh, cause. What are we? What are we for? Like you guys ask the group, what is there? So if I say join the liberty movement, well, what am I joining? What am I, you know, uh, participating in? Well, what are we about? What are we trying to do? Uh, we just want to get people involved. You know, no, uh, that's just like I, I never forget. I went to a there's a thing uh, in Atlanta where called the uh, Atlanta Center for Self Sufficiency. And they really, it's a wonderful group. They help people get off of welfare and out of homelessness and be self-sufficient. And I remember the guy was training people about a job. And people said, I just want a job. He said, okay, I got a job for you cleaning out uh, the trains. You know, or shoveling cowboy. And they're like, no, I don't mean it. So you want to be a little more specific, okay? But you don't want to be so, uh, so uh, rigid. Does that make sense? To where you run people off. But you want to be clear of what your mission is. What are we trying to do? Because there's so many people that you get in something, he's like, well, this isn't really what I thought it is. Or this person isn't really with me like I thought they were. So you want a clear mission. Any questions on that? Because that is like really a big thing. Questions, comments? Go ahead. Uh, it seems to me that any movement to get a follower, if you have to have an epiphany to follow, then you cannot force an epiphany to come. They have to come to that on their own. Like you said, you need to be Anybody else? Well, and he, he brought up a good point, and, and we're going to talk about that. That's what I said. It only takes one person to start a movement, and that could be you. You know, sometimes you feel like, well, I can't get anybody to work with me. You work with yourself. And but that's why when you, I was telling my story, when I was successful in Liberty, coming off of work, when I put Liberty in action, people start to take note. People call me, you know, it was so funny when I first got started, I was calling people, the news media, and, and begging people, people like, who are you willing to bother? Now people calling me. People, you know, are like, well, will you come and speak, or, you know, but they stopped and uh, when I went in to, you know, say, okay, I don't need the welfare anymore. They're like, well, what happened? Did you hit the lottery? And I was like, no, I, I practice on libertarianism, you know. Um, I, uh, hey, I believe in free markets, you know. And so they'll start to listen. They say, well, can you tell me more about that? Um, I, I love t-shirts and I have some Liberty American t-shirts. I have one say, I'm a proud libertarian. And people are like, well, what's a libertarian or how do I become one? So, but once you start living the life and especially getting results, I'm a big person for, I say liberty in action is getting results. And we're gonna talk about that because getting results does not mean perfect. It doesn't mean you're gonna have 100 people, but you're accomplishing something that, what your cause is about. It doesn't mean that you actually say, if, if one of your causes is cutting taxes, maybe you don't get them cut right away, but at least you, you 
presenting the material to the legislature. You're getting other people getting the message out that this is what we're trying to do and what needs to be done. So that's another thing of evaluating your, your uh, movement. Does that make sense? Your, your cause, your theme, your mission. And sometimes I think people over-evaluate and they feel like I'm a failure because I didn't get exactly, you know, I didn't, I didn't get elected. But you got your name out there. You promoted libertarianism. You got other people to think like you. And so, you know, don't think of it as a failure because you don't get 100% of your way. Does that make sense? I know that's hard for us men because we're so used to having our way. We, you guys are not. <laughs> men don't like to have their way. Y'all don't agree. Uh, you don't think so? You don't want to have your way? When in marriage, there's one person that's running the show. And sometimes it takes men a little while to figure out who that That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. See, you got it. And I was thinking, that's what I'm just saying. That's what I was saying. But yeah. Um, any other questions? Why you know? Can somebody help me with the time because I turned my cell phone. I don't want to over talk you guys too. Okay, we got a lot of time. Okay. So am I making sense so far? Anybody learn anything so far? Yeah. Great, great. Okay. Um, so we talked about my story. We talked about Larry American story. We talked about having a successful movement with having a clear, precise um, the theme or mission or the cause. And but like the brother was saying, okay, this starts with you. But in order to have a movement, you only need one other person. You get somebody else to come and work with you. Now that working with you can be great, thank God for technology, it can be online, it can be volunteer, it can be donating to you or whatever. But as you begin to practice it and put it into action and get results, people are going to resonate and, and want to be a part of it. People like being part of successful things. People like going to, uh, you know, why do people, people like soap operas? Because everybody's rich and successful in it, you know, you know, things like that. People like going a lot of times to big churches or they have a lot of events. People like going to, um, they just like, they like companies that make a lot of money. Does that make sense? People like to invest in stocks where the company's making a lot of money. So they're looking at the results. I like to use the word the fruit. Because when we think of results, sometimes if you're not having a lot of money, if you don't have a lot of people, people think they're a failure. But you want to bear fruit. If you're an apple tree, you want to have some apples. Even if they're small apples, even if it's just one apple, it would be nice to have an apple on that apple tree. Does that make sense? And so in your movement, you know, don't worry if you don't have a whole lot of people. Don't worry if you don't have a whole lot of money. All of those things are important and they can come and you do You don't want to get in a lot of debt or get in over your head. But you want to bear fruit. And that's what I call getting results or putting your liberty into action. And as you begin to do that, people will resonate. And um, you can look at, uh, there have been several examples of great movements. I use the uh, abolitionist movement, especially like the Underground Railroad, because you know they're getting ready for, what's her name? Harry Tubman on the, the money. And I'm excited about that because she was a libertarian. She put her liberty into action. And even here, it is hundreds of years later, we're putting her on our money. Why? Because she was, what, famous? No, but because she did something that made her famous, she put it into action. She actually rescued like 100 people out of slavery. And that's what I'm saying. When you have results, when you bear fruit, people will take note. And they'll be one to become a part of, of hopefully become a part of your movement. And if they don't, we're going to talk about that too. That shouldn't persuade you. Um, everybody's not going to get on board, and if they don't, but if you could sow a seed into their life, you know, of liberty or just plant a seed, and then maybe later on, you know, um, germinate and take root or something like that. But another great movement, the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, who started the Civil Rights Movement? Probably Frederick L. Douglass. Right. Well, let's talk about the modern one in the 50s this is what I'm thinking of. I'll give you a hint. It wasn't Dr. Martin Luther King. No, it wasn't Dr. Martin Luther King. No, it's not. A female, it's always women, you know. No. Oh, yeah. Who was it? Rosa Parks. When she, what did, and I want you to understand, she wasn't planning on starting the movement. She, but she, what did she do? She put her liberty in what? In action. And she said, I'm not giving them my seat today. And then, by her doing that, other people began to come with her and say, hey, I agree with you. And that's another thing of a movement. You know, you, in a movement, you want as many people, or I mean, don't box people out. You know, um, one good thing about the civil rights movement, there were probably just as many, if not more, white people, Caucasians, than there were black people. Actually, a lot of the black people, or colored people, they call them today, they didn't want to be bothered because they, they wanted to live peacefully, and they didn't, they figured, like, Robert King, he was a, a troublemaker. You know, you know, they had fought for years to get along with Caucasians, and, and they're like, hey, we don't want to upset the apple cart. So, you know, even though you have a civil rights movement to help black people, you have white people, you have uh, non-white people or, or Asians or other people. Um, and that's very important. And I'm saying that because people can help you in your movement even though they're not into liberty. 
They might be a Republican or different, they might not be a libertarian, or they might, um, you know, think a little different or talk a little different or live in a whole different state, but they can still help you. And that's very important. Sometimes we limit ourselves, we box ourselves in. Does that make sense? Don't box yourself in. Think outside of the box. And that is what, you know, that's what like Donald Trump, you know, you look at this and that's the last one. That movement is just so awesome because it's a people's movement. It wasn't a Donald Trump movement. He got on TV and said, this is what I want to do. I want to put his liberty into action of building a wall or banning this or doing what, right or wrong. He said, this is what I want to do. Other people said, I agree with you. I want to become a part of it. They began to, to, to organize um, coalitions and begin to, to raise funds and begin to do things. He never asked to raise one fund. And I mean, I have people sometimes that'll walk up and say, hey, you know, Mr. Ford, I like what you're doing. I like what, you know, you're trying to do something. Here, here's a check or here's some money. You know, and, I mean, and I won't feel bad if you guys just do that today. I mean, I won't be offended. <laughs> so, um, no. but honestly, so that is really, really something. And, and I want you to see because with, the, with his movement, the people's movement, it's not a Donald Trump movement, it's actually the people. And that's what I want to talk about. A movement is about the people. It's about the people, it's for the people. And that's something, I'm sorry, I'm preaching now, but whenever we do policies, I, I did a, I wrote a really good like a speech about the people behind the policies, and that's what the government is doing now. You know, and, and white people are so turned off, they forget, when you deal with immigration, those are real people. When you deal with criminal justice system and laws, those are real people. When you deal with um, legalizing drugs for kids with seizures, those are, are people. And when you realize that the people are in it, you're gonna be successful, hopefully. Because you're gonna realize, you know, have when I say compassion, not really sympathy or pity, but you understand it because you're a person and you want somebody to respect you. Does that make sense? So whenever you do a movement, remember the people. The people behind the policy. It's a people's movement, it's for the people, other people, body people, all those different things. But it's a people's movement. And I want to emphasize it because when you get away from the people, and that's what a lot of I look like the Republicans, they forgot the people, they just like, let's look at the news media. Whatever the news, you know, the news media, Fox News, they want to pick the candidates. We want Jay Bush because we want to, we, you know, he's going to give a lot of contrast to his crony capitalist friends. So they had already decided that. But the people said, no, that's not who we want. So no matter how much money he had, no matter how much, how many commercials he did, then they said, we're going to put Marco Ruby up there. He's Latino, he's going to bring all the Latinos in. And the people said, no, that's not what we want. And that's why I said a movement is about the people. Go to the people. If you're doing a movement, ask the people, what do you want? What do you think? Is that a question coming? Does somebody have a question? I thought I saw a hand. Okay. Um, are there any questions now? Because I can get to going. Any questions or comments? Anybody? Okay. I have one. Go ahead. Um, it seems to me like your organization is about empowering, I guess, people to succeed in their own individual lives, or is it more along the lines of trying to help them understand how uh, freedom can enrich their lives? Would you explain more about the, the purpose and the, uh, what your organization does? Okay, it's all the above. <laughs> it's all of that and other. No, um, we do help people individually empower. I like the word empower because that's what it's about. And that's another good thing. He, he must have read my notes already. Your movement is, and that's what I'm saying, when it's about the people, it's about empowering the people. Um, you, you don't have, to, and you don't have to always agree with them. There might be a person that uh, you might be, your religion or your faith and just your culture, you don't believe in same-sex marriage, but you believe it's that other person's individual right and freedom, so you empower them for their liberty. And you can actually say, I don't agree with it, or I don't see eye to eye, but it's your liberty. And so that is empowering people, but also we do want to try to put things into action, and, and we do that by trying to work with others. It's, and, and I want to bring that to another part. Your movement does not mean you're an you're an isolationist. You can, <clears throat> excuse me, your movement, uh, our Liberty America, we can work with the Libertarian Party. Liberty America can work with um, students for liberty. So just because you have a movement, it doesn't have to just be you. Work with other people. Um, and it's very, you know, that's just the time. Uh, there's three real uh, principles I learned. One, I was telling you, it's a new paradigm. You gotta really understand, it's just a new ball game. So all that stuff, a lot of stuff we've been doing for, for years, it's just new guys. The other thing is networking. And the third thing is technology. Um, you know, those are just those sites for any movement, for anything, those are just, it's just that time uh, uh, and place. So what he was talking about, you know, working with others, um, empowering people, promoting, it's networking. Don't just, don't isolate yourself in your movement. Reach out to others. Even like I said, if they don't always agree, I'll take anybody's money. If they're, you know, if they don't like whatever, you know, if they're a uh, 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 Republican, I'll even take Republicans' money, you know. Uh, but if somebody wants to volunteer, say, you know, I don't agree with this, but I want to volunteer for your peace movement. You know, say, come on, you know, work with us. 
And a lot of those people actually will come around. Uh, one of the guys um, that actually helped me found, I call my co-founder of, of Liberty America, he was a very conservative Republican and very anti-libertarian. But as he began to hang around, he has really become, you know, every week he said, oh, I signed up for the Libertarian email list, or I'm going to this event, and, you know, and so people will come around. But don't box yourself in. But did I answer your question, sir? Yes. Okay. Um, any other questions, comments? Okay. I'd like to say so. Go ahead. Like the uh, other two little parties, the Democrats have no principles, and the Republicans have principles. They just don't know what they are. <laughs> That's good. That's really good. the Democrats they do what they say. They tell you what they're going to do. The problem with the Republicans is they, they uh, since Lee Atwater and the rest of the side, they preach one thing and then they get in and they do something totally opposite. That's why people look back at them. Well, I think all of them, and even the different, I, I got really notoriety, I'll tell you, I, I tell you, they're going to put this on YouTube. But, you know, being an African American, I know that really my family is mostly a lot of Indians and white. We're all, I'm a mud to call it. But um, they, you know, after slavery, what did they promise all the slaves? Huh? What was it they promised that all the slaves when they after they ended the Civil War and the slavery? Does anybody know what my history people? And thank you, who's married to a historian? She's got to know. 40 acres in a field or something? 40 acres in a field. How many of them did they actually give approximately? How about zero? The government has not just started lying. Have y'all realized that? Politicians have not just started lying. And that's what I call it, like the Democrats, I call it that. And that's why you see Bernie Sanders and Hillary. They're just promising this, this 40 acres and a mule. And you know, you tell black people, oh, we're gonna give you free health care. And they go, yeah, I'll vote for you, you know, vote for me, and we're gonna give you free uh, daycare. Yeah, <coughs> you know, uh, Bernie Sanders, you know, we're gonna, you know, just vote for me, and uh, you'll never have to pay, you know, the light bill anymore, you know, we'll pay it for you. And they're still promising that. And that's, you know, I, I, I've stood up against that. Um, you know, and it's, it's not been easy because people, you know, uh, front and back, they're not really, you know, they've never practiced it. They, and it's really not helping anybody or giving anything. It's just about the show and the facade. And like I said, that's one reason a lot of those, uh, I call them institutions, those uh, uh, parties and, and institutes, they're, they're crumbling. Because people are tired of it, like, okay, you've been promising, I mean, how long have we been talking about racism and civil rights and all of that? But yet they're steady passing more laws to, to you know, the rest of the druggies or the, the more the minorities and the poor. How long have we been talking, you know, about, you know, you go to a uh, place, oh, we love people, we love everybody, but yet they're still trying to pass more and more laws to limit, um, you know, people's freedoms. Yeah, they're not doing anything anywhere else, right? <laughs> they are in Georgia, and they got more religious freedom laws and this law, and, and it, it's really funny, but they're steady talking about, talking one thing as the brother just said, and doing something else. Any more questions? Is that time? What time is it? That time wants to I'd like to get to Oh, okay, we got a few more time. So questions or comments? No question. What are some of the issues or groups you've worked with? Pardon me? What are some of like, the issues or groups that you've worked with and say you partner with groups to? to <sighs> I partner with everybody. But the issues, when, when I first got started, it was funny. Not too many people wanted to work with me. And, but so, you can always get the uh, marijuana legalization people, because after they, you know, smoke a few joints, they, they work with anybody. But, <laughs> <laughs> but actually, no, uh, that was actually, I, I, I was working for a campaign and one of the, the libertarians actually went to a medical cannabis legalization rally. And so I went there and I found out about them and, and they did, I, I worked with them. And we got, I was, uh, uh, I don't say instrumental, but I did participate in helping get it. Uh, we got the cannabis oil passed in Georgia, which was, it was a miracle guys, because they're, they're very conservative, sister for Georgia, they're very conservative in Georgia. They do not want to change, okay? I mean, they'd rather die than change. Seriously, some people would rather, you know, we got people that are they'd rather die than change the bylaws, you know? So, um, you know, to get that passed, and people were, they were betting in Vegas that Georgia would be the last state to pass anything like that. But we were helping successful getting that passed. Um, we work, I work with a lot of the peace groups. I had already been with a lot of those as far as uh, non-aggressive foreign policy and just, you know, peace things. Um, working with the uh, decriminalization laws, you know, which ties into the drug stuff, but we've been working with that. Um, I worked, we did something with the, the, uh, the, the equality of marriage, and I like that better than same-sex marriage, just equality of marriage, because I think they were talking about that in the debate last night. Basically, it's not about what you believe or agree with. The government should not be telling people who can get married and, and license, you know, your faith and your culture should determine that. You know, the government, they shouldn't even be in that and all of this. And, and you gotta realize, you know, people say, well, what are we gonna do with our laws, you know? Um,
but they, they don't even work. I mean, I wouldn't even mind someone if they work, but they don't work. The regulations, they don't work, you know. We're regulating walking, is it working? We're, we're killing it, you know. So, um, anything, I don't even think what else. Uh, and I really, I love free markets because, you know, business finance is my major, or whatever. And um, so I do, I do a lot of that. Um, not as much as I would like to, but free markets, I'm really into that because if we don't get some economic freedom, we're all gonna suffer. I mean, you know, I tell people, I, um, I was talking to some people, they were like immigrants. I said, you know, the issue to me is not, you know, immigration. You know, if you're legal or illegal, you know, it's not gonna matter if you can't feed your kids. So we really gotta get some free markets, guys, and really work on that and get the government out. I mean, they're just constantly, just every week, you know, they're, they're just destroying it. And they're, they're attacking uh, capitalists. They're attacking, you know, making money is bad now. I don't understand that. <laughs> you know, if we don't make any money, how can we pay ta all these taxes they keep, you know, throwing up on us and forcing down our fruit? Anything, did I answer your question? Okay, anybody else? Right? Um, yeah, until the street kind of was a fly farm Republican. I've always had uh, libertarian leanings, uh, but I'm, I'm here now. Um, yeah. but, uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I, was a, I was a delegate at the uh, 2012 Republican National Convention uh -huh. in Tampa. Uh, you, you talked about boxing, boxing people in, uh, and I think libertarians uh, do, do tend to box people in. Uh, they're ideological purists uh, in, in kind of, I find, an, an irritating way. Now, I, I wouldn't suggest at all that, that you dilute the message or your philosophy in a very consistent and, I would argue, correct philosophy in life. But when I was at the uh, National Convention, you know, I look around and, you know, we're, I don't know, there's 10,000, 20,000 people there. I mean, we're filling a stadium. Uh, with Republican activists. And I bet that you couldn't get 50 people chosen random in a room to, and they would agree on everything, 100%. Yeah. It, it doesn't happen. Right. And, and what, I, what I like to kind of think about how to, how to uh, put an analogy to this, I mean, I may find somebody who both agree that one plus 20 plus two or two plus three plus four, so, but then I ask them, what's five times three? And they tell me eight. And I said, well, you don't really understand multiplication. I find that Republican, uh, Libertarians will often say, get out of here, you're, you're purists, you don't know, understand multiplication, you know, you know, go go away. Whereas we should say, well look, we have common ground, we both understand how addition works. Let me explain how multiplication is repeated addition. But you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell that person to go away, I'm gonna try to try to bring them into in the fold. And we need to do that. We need to reach out to people, find common ground, and, and work with them on that. One, one other thing, uh, I, uh, I rose to the ranks. I, I worked for the Metropolitan Council uh, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I, um, I worked for the state legislature. I, I, I worked for Congress for a while. Became completely disenchanted with the whole thing and, and left it, thank God. Um, but I, I will say one thing that, that I always told from different legislature, legislators was that one person speaking out represents, to, in their minds, about 100,000 people, you know, depending on what there are municipal council. If one person came to the council meeting and said, I don't want this zoning law to pass or something, they looked at that person and said, Oh, that's about 350, 300 people in, in my district. The people who run our country are mostly egomaniacs and idiots. I, I can tell you fir firsthand. It does not take a lot to convince these people to think correctly. And if you can start off with your local councils, and go there and go there respectfully and speak out. If you come off as a nut job, they will never hear you. But if you go and say, I'm opposed to, you know, to this zoning, I don't think that we should dictate how this piece of land is used. You may lose, but you come off respectfully, you talk to them, and you get known, and you keep doing that and invite other people to come and talk. Uh, I regret that I didn't do more of that, but I think it's all something that's very easy. One thing that scared me, I'm sorry, what I was saying, one thing that scared me when I got into politics was how close all of us are to power. I, I didn't realize, you know, I thought, oh, a congressman, I'm a senator, wow, he's so far away. I'm just a, you know, peon. Uh, what, what, what can I do to ever put? These people are accessible to you. And they really, they often have no philosophical foundation to their beliefs. It's whatever way the wind blows them, whoever's giving money to them, that's what influences. But, but libertarians have a strong, powerful, consistent, logical, rational message. And a lot of them, if you just go speak to them, 
they'll hear it. Maybe they may not change right away, but do it over time. Be patient. Work with them, and you'll see, and you will see results. Thank, Thank you for sharing that, brother. Um, he brought up a good point, and I hope I didn't. You know, I do have a tendency to generalize the stereotype, but I'm not doing it in that. When I use a lot of times, I say Republicans or group people together just for for common knowledge, because we kind of get the essence of it sometimes. And but that's a really good point. Um, I like what you said um, about how powerful you are, and that's kind of the thing we're going to end on. I want you guys to understand how powerful you are and how you can start a movement or do a movement, work a movement, create a movement, or join somebody else's movement, and you can make a difference. That is so important. Um, so many times people think that, you know, my vote doesn't count, or my dollar doesn't count, or my uh, attendance doesn't count, but it really makes all the difference. You have the power, and we together, united, have the power to change things and do some great things. And last but not least, um, I want to just, one thing, I always call it challenges to a movement, because you're going to get some people who don't like it. You're going to get some people sabotage you. You're going to get some haters, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, you're going to get people that, 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 the media that tries to smear you. And the key is that, uh, my mantra is that giving up is not an option. You can, there's only one way to have a failure as a move, in, a, in a movement, and that's if you quit. Do you understand that? That's the only way you can lose is if you get out the game. Because if, if you yourself are living liberty, and if you are promoting your cause, you're going to be successful at it. Because once again, it's your perception of success. You know, as long as you're bearing fruit, I think you're being successful. As long as you're planting a seed. Like the brother said, they might not come around right away, but you can work with them and, and continue to sow a seed and water or, or something like that. But don't give up, don't quit. And if you need help, call me, darling, or call this brother, he's brilliant. You know, call somebody, work with somebody, reach out and get help. And that's what I'm excited that, that we're there for. That's why I'm the King of Liberty. Because I'm there to help serve you. I'm there to help you uh, any way I can to promote liberty or make it to put it into action. And there's a, uh, I'm not freaking, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, if you go into a city and they don't receive you, shake off the dust and go into the next city. Guys, this is a secret to success. If you go to somebody and they don't want to listen to you, don't get angry, don't argue, don't fight. Just hang up the phone and call the next person. If somebody don't want to donate, say, thank you. That's okay. You go into the next, you know. That's why I always keep like four or five weapons in one. One could be under the other one, and that's another story. But, but no, seriously, and I want to leave on that because I see people get so discouraged. Have anybody ever been discouraged in any kind of movement or politics? It can get discouraging, guys. It can get discouraging. But that's where I want to empower you that you can make a difference, but don't ever give up. Don't quit, because that's the only way you can lose. But if people don't receive you, because they're human beings. Sometimes people say the wrong thing or the wrong way, or they're, they're vicious. Anybody else want to be vicious or mean? Um, I was talking to a guy um, this morning. And he was running a campaign, and he actually had death threats. He had people calling him with death threats, like, wait a minute, do I really want to be in politics? You know, but, <laughs> okay, you know, pardon me? Oh, yeah, yeah, we should. Yeah, we should. Yeah. We got three of the same. Yeah. So, you know, you have to just sometimes get ahead, just go on to the next one. And that's not always easy to do. But, you know, we get to work. Does that make sense? Um, sometimes there's a healing process or whatever, but, but don't let other people kill your vision or steal your dreams. Okay? Any final questions? I think we're about 11 o'clock, right? i got to set up my next talk. <laughs> uh, <laughs>